Good morning and welcome. Uh, it has been a great pleasure to have been a part of the Common Ground Project these past months and to have the opportunity to deepen my understanding of the Central Valley and exploration begun over two decades ago with the California Council for the Humanities grant. So we did get a California Council for the Humanities grant, only the second one awarded to um, uh, anybody here in the Valley uh, in the early 1990s. Um, it was for a series of lectures and activities at Modesto Junior College inspired by Gerald Haslam's The Other California. That grant was followed by another to fund the Highway 99 Literary Anthology. So there have been two humanities grants, uh, but they've been funded by the California Humanities Council. Uh, we had authors, poets, and journalists who uh, read in libraries from Reading to Bakersfield. So it has been wonderful to revisit some of the same texts and to garner fresh insights from our colleagues at CSU Stanislaus and UC Merced, and they have been wonderful. Uh, because of the overwhelmingly positive response to assembling the materials of a Central Valley, Valley identity uh, in the early 90s, the two humanities grants in the 90s ignited in me a commitment to multidisciplinary regional literacy in the classroom. I had at my disposal interdisciplinary dyads, which we don't do too many of anymore. I taught English, uh, and a natural history museum, and I hope you have the time today to take a walk over to the Science Community Center and to visit that natural history museum, which was a little two-room place um, on the corner of a street, uh, right down from my classroom uh, on the East Campus. So I hope you'll have a chance to go take a look at it. We read and wrote widely across the disciplines, and I'm getting, you're going to have to be taller, I'm going to read you a litany of names here, because this was the richness of this experience in the classroom. We read William Preston and Alice Outwater, Mary Austin and Thomas Jefferson Mayfield, Carrie McWilliams and Joel Salatin, Ernest Finney and Wilma McDaniel, Jack Weatherford and Jack Forbes, Freeman House and Bob Edminster, Luis Alberto Urea and Rudolfo Anaya, Anna Castillo and Jimmy Santiago Baca, Earl Shores and Walter Nordhoff, Wallace Stegner and Terry Tempest Williams, Michael Pollan and Marion Nestle, Wendell Berry and Annie Leonard. We watched movies together, Grizzly Man and Dirt, Bless Me Ultima in La Mission, McFarland and Cadillac Desert, Heart of Sky, Heart of Earth. We read about the indigenous peoples of the area, what they ate and how they managed their resources. We learned about native habitats and the concept of kinship. We read about grizzlies and salmon and tules and oaks. We read about factory farms and family farms, about bee pastures and motowns, about untrammeled and appropriated waters, about vernal pools and tulare lake, about poems and plants in prisons, about the heartrending dialectic of violence and tenderness. We restored riparian, freshwater marsh, and grassland habitats at the local national wildlife refuges on weekends. Entire families turned out to help us plant willows, cottonwoods, alkali, sacatan, bunch grass, and saltgrass plugs. How moving when one grandfather showed us how to tape up our boots with duct tape so no water would get in. And we ate a lot in the classroom. Food made by students, their mothers, fathers, grandmothers. When we read The Hummingbird's Daughter, we ate nopales and gingerbread pigs and pan de muerto. We talked about the god of corn and the god of bread. And what did we learn from all this? That the poetics of the Central Valley is a poetics of tensions, that the landscape is powerful and forgiving, as we learned at the refuges, the response of wildlife was immediate. But that in the valley, land and water are appropriated in patterns that have destroyed the environment and often created great wealth for a few and poverty and misery for many. That we commodify rather than sacralize nature. That diversity is not an abstraction, but a perennial feature from the multilingual, multicultural, um, indigenous groups to the multilingual, multicultural immigrant groups residing here now. We learned that food culture should be communal, not competitive, and that water should be a public trust and not a cash crop, and that we are in desperate need of a water ethic. We learned, among, among many other things, that there are people who believe that if the valley were anywhere else on the planet, it would be considered a cradle of civilization. So to close, I would like to read one poem which reminds me of what Nigel Hatton said about place 
as a pause. Poet Robert Mezzi seems to have captured the strange beauty and mystery of the Central Valley landscape and the voices that linger there, linger here, calling, waiting to take us places. So listen for them. And this is the poem, White Blossoms. Take me as I drive alone through the dark countryside, as the strong beams clear a path, picking out fences, weeds, late flowering trees, everything that streams back into the past without sound. I smell the grass and the rich chemical sleep of the fields, an open moon sails above, and a stalk of red light blinks miles away. It is at such moments I am called, in a voice so pure, I have to close my eyes and enter the breathing darkness just beyond my headlights. I have come back, I think, to something I had almost forgotten, a mouth that waits patiently, sighs, speaks, and falls silent. No one else is alive. The blossoms are white, and I am almost there. Thank you.